This is Valley News Live at 4. Good afternoon, everyone. The city of Highland Park, Illinois, is in mourning today following yesterday's shooting at its Independence Day parade. The death toll rose today to seven, with more than 30 others hurt when a gunman opened fire from the rooftop of a local business as the parade marched by. Today, police released new details about how the gunman carried out the attack. Marissa Perlman has the latest from Highland Park. Police say the man they believe carried out Monday's deadly parade shooting. 21-year-old Robert Cremo III fired off at least 70 rounds from a high-powered rifle that he legally obtained. We do believe Cremo pre-planned this attack for several weeks. He accessed the roof of a business via a fire escape ladder and began opening fire on the innocent Independence Day celebration goers. The investigation reveals the shooter was disguised in women's clothing as he carried out the attack. Investigators do believe he did this to conceal his facial tattoos and his identity and help him during the escape uh, with the other people who were fleeing the chaos. Following the attack, Cremo exited the roof. He dropped his rifle and he blended in with the crowd and he escaped. Officials say he then walked to his mother's home and drove away in her vehicle. He was apprehended about nine hours later during a traffic stop. Police say they found another rifle in his car and more legal firearms at his home in a nearby town. Now investigators are pouring through videos of the incident and Cremo's social media accounts. At this point, we have not developed a motive from him. We have no information to suggest at this point it was racially motivated, motivated by religion or any other protected status. The victims ranged in age from 8 to 85. Among those killed, Jackie Sundheim, who worked at a local synagogue, and great-grandfather Nicholas Toledo, who was visiting from Mexico. He was shot to death while watching the parade from his walker. Marissa Perlman, CBS News, Highland Park, Illinois. Investigators believe the gunman acted alone and his victims were random. They're still deciding which charges to file. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum has directed all government agencies to fly flags at half staff until sunset on Saturday. And he encourages North Dakotans to do the same at their homes and businesses in honor of the victims of yesterday's shooting in Highland Park. A little closer to home, Minneapolis police say eight people were wounded, some critically, in a shooting at a park last night during some private 4th of July celebrations. One person told police that she was watching people light fireworks when she heard a series of gunshots. Minneapolis police say there was no formal July 4th event or fireworks at the park, but people had gathered there to celebrate the holiday. No one is in custody. Authorities have not released details about the eight who were taken to hospitals. Here in the Valley, police have responded to nearly 100 calls related to fireworks over the past 72 hours. That's a combined total from just Moorhead and West Fargo. We haven't heard back yet from Fargo police. The city of West Fargo says since 6 p.m. this past Sunday, West Fargo police received 37 calls for service related to fireworks. However, no citations were issued and no arrests were made. In Moorhead, a total of 60 firework calls have been made since July 1st. 33 of those were made on July 4th. Hutch joins us now with a first look at your forecast. Hutch. Stacy, it's been a great day across the valley for most of us, and some showers have been ongoing for many in our southern counties. A few rumbles of thunder as well as temperatures have been held back by the gray skies and even some fog to start our day. Checking out what's going on across the region on the radar. We'll make this full screen so you can see. Notice we did get clipped by the northernmost fringe of this in places like Fargo, Holly, and Detroit Lakes, but the brunt of the rain shower activity down near the South Dakota border in southeast North Dakota. These are drifting into Lakes Country right now along Interstate 94 and points South Grant County. You're going to see some showers as is Traverse and Wilkin County, the heaviest batch near Wheaton right now. This is going to continue its trek south and east Check out what it did to our temperatures today. Only 70s for many of us. It is warming a bit up north, but it's not full sun there either. So we're limited to 70s at this time. Now that warmest weather down to the south and east toward the Twin Cities. Your planner for Fargo tonight. Check this out. As the rain showers exit and the thicker clouds do too, we may lurch up in temperature just a little bit as we go through the late evening hours. That doesn't happen all the time. We should stay below 80 degrees though, as we'll stay cloudy as well. Grand Forks similarly near 80 degrees the next couple of hours and then cooling a bit into the overnight. More thunder in the forecast, some serious heat to talk about for the weekend, and I'll have details on when we may have more widespread strong thunderstorm potential 
here in a minute. Stacy. All right. Thanks so much, Hatch. Fargo police are looking for the person accused of using a green laser early this morning. Police say just before 5 a.m. they were called to a home off of 8th Avenue South. The caller told police they saw a man with a raised handgun firing rounds into the air. Police say no shell casings were found, but they did find a discarded green laser in the area. That investigation is still ongoing. A West Fargo couple is hurt after hitting a deer while riding their motorcycle in Becker County. Minnesota State Patrol officials say 73-year-old Brian Irving was driving on Highway 87 east of Frazee yesterday afternoon when the crash happened. He and his passenger, Beverly Irving, were treated at the Detroit Lakes Hospital. Troopers say neither of them was wearing a helmet. Derek Chauvin will be sentenced on Thursday on civil rights violations in the death of George Floyd. Last December, he signed a plea agreement and changed his plea to guilty, admitting that he willfully deprived Floyd of his constitutional rights during the fatal May 2020 arrest. Prosecutors are asking for a 300-month sentence, which is 25 years, to be served concurrently with Chauvin's state sentence. He was convicted last April of murder and manslaughter and was sentenced to 22 and a half years. Authorities are now confirming they've arrested the man responsible for a deadly drive-by shooting in Cass Lake, Minnesota. The Cass County Sheriff's Office in Minnesota arrested 46-year-old William Hedberg last week, nearly one year after the murder. But the Sheriff's Office didn't confirm Hedberg was the suspect until this morning. 34-year-old Diego Gasca was shot in a yard while he was at a house party. He later died at the hospital. Take a look at this. Firefighters in Cleveland, Ohio battled an intense blaze this morning. This video released on Twitter shows a vacant home completely engulfed in flames. Fire officials say there were reports that kids threw fireworks into that house. The official cause remains under investigation. No one was hurt. Today, President Biden awarded four men who fought in the Vietnam War the nation's highest honor for military service. The president praised their heroism on the battlefield. Now, more than 50 years later, saying time has not diminished their bravery. Deborah Alfarone has more from the White House. At the White House, President Biden gave the Medal of Honor to four Vietnam War era soldiers who went beyond the call of duty. Today, we're setting the record straight. We're upgrading the awards of four soldiers who perform acts of incredible heroism. Staff Sergeant Edward Kaneshiro's son, John, received the award on his behalf. Kaneshiro was shot and killed in battle four months after bravely repelling an attack on his unit in 1966. I know that no award can ever make up for the loss of your father, but I hope today that you take some pride and comfort in knowing his valor is finally receiving the full recognition it has always deserved. From 1968 through 1972, Specialist 5 Dwight Birdwell, Specialist 5 Dennis Fujii, and Major John Duffy all put themselves in harm's way to repel enemy attacks on their units, rejecting medical treatment for their injuries while allowing other wounded troops to flee to safety. During the ceremony, President Biden gave a nod to the federal government's efforts to review the service of Asian Americans, Native Americans, and Pacific Islanders, noting the diverse backgrounds of Tuesday's honorees. For those who give their best for our country, we'll always, always give our best to you. Since taking office, President Biden has also awarded the Medal of Honor to four other service members. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. Today's ceremony comes just days after the death of Herschel Woody Williams, who was the last surviving Medal of Honor recipient for his service in World War II. He'll lie in honor in the U.S. Capitol later this week. The community of Valley City is remembering a woman that many call one of a kind. With a personality and a smile that could light up the room, Barb Hankey leaves behind a legacy of service to others. A, a calm in a way that she didn't have any expectation of recognition. And she just led people through her example. And she did it with such, such joy. Tonight on Valley News Live at 6, we're paying tribute to a decades-long volunteer and emergency responder with the goal of spreading compassion and hope to others in need. The 4th of July weekend proved to be quite the headache for travelers across the country with thousands of flights either canceled or delayed. TSA says on Friday alone, 2.5 million people were screened, making that a record high since the start of the pandemic. If you plan on driving up on I-29 near Oslo later this week, there will be some road work to consider starting Thursday. The southbound lanes of I-29 will be reduced to 40 miles per hour where workers are present. The slowdown will be because of some concrete pavement repairs needed in that area. Those repairs are expected to take until early October. 
If you're flying out of Hector, be prepared to show up early. New 3D scanners are now being installed at Hector International Airport in Fargo. While they're being installed, travelers should arrive at the airport at least two hours early. The work is expected to be done by the 22nd. Once they're up and working, travelers will no longer have to take out electronics before sending their bag down the conveyor belt. TSA agents will also have fewer bags to check, thanks to the new scanners. And an iconic food is now 85 years old. It's Spam, the spiced ham product invented by J. Hormel for his New Year's Eve party back in 1936. The canned creation got the first two letters of its name from the word spice, the last two from the word ham. Spam made its official public debut one year later in 1937 when the pre-cooked meat was used to help feed troops during World War II. It's since become part of pop culture with its own namesake museum in Minnesota. Well, a new study suggests that children today are heavier than they've been in the last decade. We'll have more on that still to come. Rain showers and some loud bolts of lightning exiting off to the south and east, just now exiting the uh, Breckenridge Wapaton area. Many areas in blue here, a tenth of an inch to nearly a half of an inch, where you see some greens popping in out near Oaks and Ellendale, up to an inch estimated by radar. Your forecast has heat and storms details next.